Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Bangers. Guys, if you clicked on this, you know we're gonna be talking about cocktails tonight. Upfront disclaimer, it wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy because the TAV team doesn't have that many boozy concentrates um, you know, in circulation, and therefore it was difficult selecting recipes. And uh, But we finally did, and we did get a show together. The show must go on, so you know, I'm super happy to be here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run you through a couple of cocktails tonight. Um, for those of you that aren't a part of the group Mixologist on Facebook, you will see that we actually, you know, get a lot of influence for these shows from our viewers and from the people in that group. They make decisions on, um, you know, what. Uh, what categories we pick for the banger show um, and you know some of the other shows that we do also and um, they also put their recipes that they would like reviewed in the thread um, you know for some of the posts that I put out for the banger show so you know this is a show where uh, we give feedback and we love doing that and you know I'm really happy that we are getting so much support um, for the show, you know, it, it, it has been the, you know, the one show that um, people just keep on enjoying and watching and, um, you know, we get to review some of your recipes and learn while we do that. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, first things first, of course, welcome to everybody in chat. Guys, sit back, relax, hope you enjoy this. Uh, also, be aware uh, we had some terrible news in the DIY community. Uh, Flip, aka Kind Ground, uh, he's been diagnosed with cancer, and uh, we've got a GoFundMe. So anybody in chat that has that link, you can share it now. Uh, you can share it throughout this whole episode. Um, also in the description of this video, you will find that link. Guys, go and support. It's our opportunity now to give back to Kind Ground. He's so generously given back or given to the community with all his recipes notes and shows now it's our time to give back to him all right guys i want to start off with birds bees see birds bees and bubbles uh by chris garner uh, seduced is what his name is on uh, atf this is a fairly new not fairly i think brand freaking spanking new recipe um, I've just seen it recently being re released excuse me I've just seen it being released recently um, let's just go through what this whole recipe is about so birds bees and bubbles by seduced an exotic vape based on birds bees the birds bees cocktail in this refreshing recipe a lot is going on to create a very tasteful vape I used the berry blend, some rose essence, and a touch of black bar bitters infused into this uh, juniper gin to create a delicate, aromatic, sparkling wine vape cocktail or cocktail vape. The berry blend uh, pairs beautifully with the FLV rose essence. I'm going to be trying that live right now. FLV black bar bitters adds a nice bitter touch and mixed with the FLV uh, juniper gin and FLV uh, bubble brewed wine and some FLV honey bee to bind the flavors and adding some sweetness. I add a little bee, a little bit of, <laughs> little bee, a little bit of FLV sweetness, sweetener, I think this mix needs some anyway. The result is complex uh, juice experience that changes with every vape you take. So it's one of those chameleon vapes, right? Um, the mix balances from flourish fruity taste to, um, to a more sophisticated and tasteful bubble wine. Yeah, so it's that play, um, you know, like a like a floral kind of play on a fruit, uh, you know. So a lot of a lot of wines that I've tasted um, that you know have like a floral element uh, infused in it. Uh, it's it's very you know fruity and fresh and sparkling. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. He expecting he's saying there a very very zen and exotic soft fruity and never boring perfect for the coming summer evenings available after a few days yeah let's do this guys let's do this i'm going to be trying this out live today um just you know just because just because that is what i want to do you know so that everybody can see my reaction and um you know it's just easier it's, it's less scripted 
Excuse me, that might, might be making a little bit of noise. Um, I'm 100% um, agreeing with the FLV Berry Blend. I also like that a lot. It itself um, has a little bit of texture to it. You know, I use it for jams, that kind of thing. The rose essence with that is genius. I like it. Um, of course, the alcoholic element in there is backbar bitters and juniper gin, but don't let that put you off. It's just so subtle in here. It doesn't actually, you know, it doesn't pierce through uh, that delicate berry blend and rose essence flavors because you can think a gin might actually throw you and, uh, you know, redirect your focus on the gin rather than the berry blend. I think focus here is definitely more on the rose essence and the berry blend and uh, the, the alcohol element is kind of at the back. Uh, the honey here just feels to me like it... Uh, rounds out the vape uh, the, or the vape experience which means this whole thing kind of hangs together really well it's actually quite you know for uh, a lot of top notes you know I find this uh, you know the mouthfeel on this quite pleasing um, it is it's you know it's got uh, a floral elements in it um, so yes there is a lot of, of things happening at the top of this vape, but the vape itself also has body. The sweetener helps out with that. And yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm down to do a little bit more of this. I think um, Seduce did a fantastic job over here. Yeah, dude, this is, this is delicious. If you like florals, you're gonna be into this thing. Um, I think it's uh, it, it's something that transcends for me. You know, it's not rose and it's not berry. It's not wine and it's not gin. It's all those things together. So for me, I'm not huge into uh, florals. Uh, I do sometimes mess with it. For me, uh, this would be a tip of the banger. Um, if, if not a banger, you know, so it's really, really close to a banger. The only reason I'm not giving it a, a banger is because I only give bangers for things that I would vape all the time. So it has to be within my wheelhouse, which is just a thing, right? But this 100% will be a banger for somebody that's into their florals. Well done, Chris. Um, I'm digging this. I'm digging this birds, bees and bubbles. Busted juice. Uh, I'll put a link out in chat. Thanks, guys. So for this week's mix, I did John Cena by Chris DVR. And this is a mimosa. Interesting, a very interesting vape. I'm going to share the recipe on the screen here. And his notes says, a wonderful strawberry citrus mimosa with a perception of effervescence and a great sweet and bitter contrast. These new FLV flavorings are going to be game changers. So at the time of releasing this recipe, he called it John Cena because these were um, brand new released FLV um, concentrates that were not available to everyone. But hopefully by now, everyone has them and can mix this up. He uses 1% FLV back bar bitters, 0.5% brewed bubble wine, 1.5% citrus soda, and these are all obviously FLV concentrates, then 2% FA juicy strawberry and 1% flavor waste sweetener. This is a very interesting recipe for me because I normally find with uh, boozy babes that they end up being a bit on the bitter side or dry side, which I don't very, I don't enjoy very much in a vape. I like a sweeter vape, um, and for 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 that reason, I normally don't mix the the boozy babes. But in this case, with this recipe, I was pleasantly surprised with um, just the authenticity and uh, how great this recipe was. The combination of the back bar bitters, brewed bubble wine and the citrus soda just gives you this very authentic um, wine, bubble wine, like a champagne, but it is a very authentic um, profile from the, the, the fizz all the way through to the flavor. It is, you, you can't mistake it for, 
for the flavor that it is. Then the addition of the juicy strawberry and that touch of sweetness just makes this the spot on perfect mimosa. I mean, this recipe is accurate to the point where the fizz, I, it feels like I just had a sip of an actual mimosa. The flavor is very well balanced and that sweetness, is, the, the sweetness of the juicy strawberry and sweetener is just perfect. So I really enjoyed this recipe and I would say if you enjoy a, um, a boozy like a champagne or a boozy type of wine, definitely give this a mix. You will enjoy this. Um, I also have to mention this recipe is delicious straight off the shake. I mean, I would I mixed this and then immediately vaped it and it was perfect. There was no harshness or any funny off notes. It is a delicious, fizzy, um, that effervescence from the mimosa is there. And uh, I feel that sweetness from the juicy strawberry is just perfect and complements, wraps this recipe up so, so well. So from my side, I give this a banger and um, I would rate this a five, which you will see on the comments of the recipe on ATF. Thank you for this recipe. And if you guys have mixed this before, please put your comments in the comment section below. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay, guys, the next recipe I would like to talk about today is uh, from a fellow TFV member. He doesn't know that I'm going to be mixing this up. I don't think he's uh, going to be in the show tonight, so he might be in chat. And if you are, welcome, Rudy. And I hope you enjoyed this review. So, um, Rudy did a, a juniper gin, FLB juniper gin mix, um, you know, kind of modeled after a very popular a brand here in South Africa which is Vapor Mountain uh, that's Benji over there so shout out to Benji from Vapor Mountain with that concept um, but this of course uh, this is a pink gin all right and um, I'm gonna show you the recipe and let's just go through it okay so uh, pink gin by Rude Rudy he did this for a layer episode, so he has gone through it. Um, you can check in our in, in our videos, or if you if you do a search in in this channel, the Fog Blog, you'll find um, his notes in there, right? So, um, so he did this because him he is uh, he's really into gin. Okay, uh, craft gin is big here in South Africa. I'm not sure if it's like that around the world um, but let's look at um, what he what he used the flavors for FLV gin is a masterfully created authentic dry gin which leaves little guesswork to the vapor as what they are tasting yeah 100% 100% you have to also be careful with that uh, the resinous piney uh, flavor inherent to the juniper berry is a wonderfully balanced but citrus peel and smidgen of spiciness from fresh, freshly ground peppercorns. This, there is a wondrous beauty element to the flavor which rounds the profile off expertly. The booziness is not overwhelming in, this, um, in the least, but rather uh, augments the authenticity and overall gin experience. Yeah, FLV banging job banging job on uh, on this concentrate it, it it just it just feels like it cannot be more right you know i don't even i don't even know why anybody else would um would mess with with the juniper gin flavor going forward because it's just done so right flv rose essence um brings a delicate true rose sophistication to the mix and softens the gin ever so slightly yeah that's true he says there, this is a very safe rose flavor compared to the other overpowering versions and will not kill your mix. If used in care at 2%, it brings semi-rose tinge without being floral. Yeah, I vape this. Um, I've, I've tested this already. And uh, for me, you know, this, if I'm going to be ordering a pink gin from the bar um, and it arrives what this is tasting like is what I'm expecting. You know, the word pink in there is just so perfect for this recipe. It's like pink gin and that is it. 
it's just you know done correctly of course the cucumber uh, the cucumber in here fills two roles firstly it provides some juiciness to the mix without dis uh, distraction and where a cactus does this slightly better but it imparts an overwhelming flavor yeah you could have gone with one of those two uh, for juiciness I think uh, cucumber is used uh, in, in many craft gin uh, recipes so it's a, it's a good choice um, there's a uh, optional colada that you can add in here um, I didn't do that I didn't put it in the colada because I didn't want it to, you know that icy feel I wanted to really just understand what this is all about but this will be delicious with a little bit of colada the citrus soda he uh, really says brings a new level of authentic lemonade sprite type flavor to the market yes I am I'm blown away by this flavor guys if, if you like sodas and you like citrus soda or citrusy soda this has to be in your cart, right? This has to. A very light touch of fizziness, uh, Rudy says, and I've said that before as well. So this just, you know, of course, um, makes this whole uh, pink gin uh, recipe super authentic, you know? So uh, I don't think you can do it more perfect than uh, what Rudy has done over here. And I, I was gonna I was gonna roast them on this recipe for for sure one hundred percent, but I can't. You've done it right. This is exactly what it tastes like, and I think what paid off here for Rudy is because this is something that he's into. You know, he's into uh, craft gins, so he knows what the balance should be and how it needs to taste, and he knows what fruits and what berries are going to be working well uh, with the gin and, and the juniper gin, and he's just executed it perfectly. Uh, for me, I'm not going to vape, uh, you know, a gin all the time. I, uh, I, yeah, I'm just not into gin that much. However, I think for a gin uh, fan or you know somebody like Rudy who's into his craft gins, you are gonna you're gonna love this. This is definitely really good. Um, I'm gonna give this a tip of the banger. It's not gonna be an all day vape form for me, but for gin, a gin lover, it most certainly will be. Well done, Rudy. This is brilliant. Good afternoon to everybody in chat. Um, for this episode of Bangers, I thought I'd do something uh, uh, slightly different from, uh, from what we normally do. I've been struggling to find time to mix up this week and to find a cocktail mix that I can actually make up that wasn't actually one of my cocktails so um, I went onto the Facebook group uh, for uh, Mixologist South Africa this morning and Luke, Luke Loops, uh, Wadey Loops on ATF had actually put a uh, recipe into that thread and looking at it I thought hey uh, I can make this this actually looks uh, really good on paper so I, I'm gonna make this up and uh, use it for the bangers episode now for those that don't know um, Loop Loop Wadey Loops he's actually uh, been been around mixing for quite a while and um, his recipes uh, really started catching my attention because they're they all they all look really well thought out all of the flavors uh, look really well balanced so uh, I thought I'd uh, give this one a try and see how it goes so what I'm gonna do is uh, a feature instead of a, instead of a, instead of a review so I won't actually be giving this at any marks out of uh, out of five on this so unfortunately no fist bumps or bangers or tip of the bangers from me for, the, for this one because it just wouldn't be fair on the mixer uh, reviewing off a shake and vape when it actually states it needs a three day steep so the recipe is called slug petting land in his notes he says uh, I'm not French isn't this how the cocktail is pronounced though the recipe is as follows it's 0.5% flavor of blood orange 3% vape train blood orange champagne 1% vape train lemonade clear and 0.25% Cabela sweet tangerine 
Now, this recipe was, uh, as I said, was mixed up five minutes before uh, before I started recording for this show. Now, what I'm getting off a of shake and vape is uh, that lemonade clear comes through nice and strong. Gives you a very nice, sweet lemonade. Um, and some people might actually get a little bit of uh, effervescence from this. Uh, what I actually get on my taste buds uh, when others taste effervescence is I, I get a odd um, sort of cold emptiness on my um, on my taste buds if that makes any sense. Now it's not not to do with the uh, it's not to do with the concentrates. It's, it's actually to do with my taste buds and the way that they actually pick up. Um, Effervescence. When when it happens, which isn't very often, it is actually <laughs> rather strange. And um, occasionally, I do get a very very slight tingle on my tongue, which is what I get from uh, from this lemonade clear. So for those of you that are actually looking for uh, for a fizzy recipe, it might actually be a good idea to pick up that uh, that lemonade clear and play around with it a little bit. Now, to go back to uh, to Luke's recipe. I get that nice, nice sweet lemonade clear with uh, what I believe is a slight effervescence that some people might actually experience from it. This is then uh, backed up then with the blood orange champagne coming through quite nicely, just behind that lemonade. Um, nice sweet uh, orange with a very, 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 very slight rind zesty zesty note not overly present because this is uh, this is mainly a juice um, that blood orange then in the champagne then gets enhanced by the addition of the half a percent of FA blood orange just to give this a, a nice little bit of depth to it and that uh, FA blood orange actually gives it uh, again uh, another little uh, another little zesty note to it it's just um, enhances the mouthfeel so this doesn't actually feel like a very like a thin recipe it's actually got quite a nice little bit of depth and complexity to it that 0.25 percent of uh, capella sweet tangerine then just sweetens up the whole mix nice and naturally so this is actually quite a quite a sweet mix without using any sweetener um, the sweet tangerine again is um, it's a juicy note so what you're getting from uh, from this recipe is a lemonade mixed with a slightly dry champagne and a nice sweet and juicy orange juice type. Now, I would expect, as uh, Luke actually said on his recipe, in three days time, this will actually merge together a lot more with the uh, with that orange coming through a little bit stronger whether it'll um, top out above the lemonade and then you get the lemonade as the base note I'm not too sure but at the moment off a shake and vape this is de this, this is decently balanced for a shake and vape recipe that um, the mixer is actually saying needs three days um, I would recommend anybody that is mixing this recipe up from Luke to uh, give it the full three days that he has uh, that he has suggested before leaving any reviews for him. But I, if oranges are your thing, if lemonade is your thing, if cocktails are your thing, this is definitely a recipe that you should be giving a try to, and and you should be mixing up. And uh, leaving the uh, leaving the mixer some uh, very much needed feedback. Thank you, everybody. Back over to you, Theo. Okay, guys. The final recipe uh, that I want to talk about is uh, Berry Punch Blast, and this is by Noodles, in 1972. Um, so you know, the only way I found that this is a cocktail is because the unicorn that he's got in there look is looking slightly uh, yeah bruised up i'll share this link so that you can see what i'm talking about of course the recipe contains champagne as well 
um, the recipe has punch in the name. So I'm like, yeah, this is a boozy recipe. I'm down. I'm down to check it out. So, uh, yeah, let me share this recipe, you know, just so that you guys can see what I'm talking about over here. All right, so uh, Berry Punch Blast by Noodles 1972. A tasty fruity soda blend that you can't quite put your finger on. Okay, so yeah, this was interesting for me. Um, you know, so there's a couple of things, of, of course, uh, that I'll run you through. Um, I like the idea of blueberry and citrus soda together. The champagne over there, I think, will just add a little bit of a, a you know slight zing which will make you think hey this is this is like a like some kind of thing with bubbles or some kind of beverage with bubbles the dragon fruit over there is used to emulsify everything there's of course uh golden pineapple and there's uh, tpa raspberry sweet uh, the main profile of this um, I believe is the citrus punch. I don't believe uh, TPA citrus punch is on the market anymore. I think there's a version 2 out now. Uh, so this recipe might need to be um, recreated. Maybe even looking at FLV citrus, uh, citrus soda, right? Citrus punch. Um, so, uh, you know, swapping out with, with citrus, citrus punch. Yeah, maybe if you're going to be using... Um, if you want to mix this up and try it and you don't have citrus punch, I would probably go in with citrus soda, but you know, a little bit less than half. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, so this is this is my opinion on this. I think um, I think there's a lot going on in this mix. I think uh, I like the idea of blueberry extra and citrus together. It certainly did smell delicious. Um, you know while I was mixing it up uh, the dragon fruit to emulsify the golden pineapple to just add like um, just another element to this however um, I think you know if a meringue was used in here um, just to add some body to this and I think you know it, it almost comes off as a cream you know and uh, in a beverage you know to, to taste the cream or a meringue it throws the profile a little bit um, I do like this concept though so uh, noodle I'm I'm down I'm digging this um, so I'm not sure when this uh, recipe was created a oh, 2000 oh, it was updated in 2019 um, it was created originally in uh, 2016 okay but but yeah um, if I would maybe think of one thing here is to potentially just remove the FM ring and then rather go with the cactus um, that will, you know, kind of sit behind the citrus punch or you go in with a little bit of cucumber just to sell that uh, that juiciness that you get from a beverage, that you would get from a punch. But the idea of blueberry and citrus together is something that appeals to me. So I think there's, uh, you know, some good elements in this, uh, in this mix. However, the meringue is throwing it, it's distracting me slightly. Um, but, you know, because of that, I want to give Noodles 1972 a fist pump over there for some uh, some work and, uh, you know, some moves. Um, yeah, go and check this mix out, guys. I will throw it in chat for you. Cheers. Okay, so we have come to the end of our show today. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody out in chat that's here week after week, you know, uh, just checking out the recipes with us and making comments, laughing. You know, this has just become my life. And, uh, you know, it's cool to be part of this community. And the same community that has an opportunity now to help somebody else, which is uh, Philip, aka Kind Ground. You know, he's been diagnosed with uh, esophageal cancer, and uh, there's a GoFundMe. You'll find that in the description of this video. He's been giving us quite a bit, uh, you know, from a DIY perspective, from a notes and content perspective. It's our opportunity now to give back to him. Okay, guys, just a couple of things before I say goodbye. Like I said, thank you for joining us week after week. Um, and uh, a couple of channels that I wanted to shout out is uh, Daytime Franco and check out his uh, YouTube channel. 
and uh, mixing in the kitchen is his Facebook group. Uh, Fresh 03, I know he's moving now, but you know, it looks like his channel is still uh, producing content, which is cool. I love this community. It just shows you, you know, how willing people are to help out. Uh, DIY down under, uh, yeah, go and check out their Facebook group. Tons of awesome content there. Um, and go and subscribe to their YouTube channel as well. Developed, guys, I love Developed. Um, I kind of lurk and watch the, the replays and stuff. Um, but but I do appreciate uh, what the guys from Developed are doing. It's one of the shows that I like to follow. Mix and Vixens, um, they, uh, they uh, you know, they get feedback from uh, from their uh, Facebook group on you know what what profiles to mix up people play along mix them up It's real fun. They feature your recipe in some of the episodes and then finally they decide which recipes they want to take forward to get roasted by uh, You know some of the, the other mixes in the community and that's cool. That's just such a cool journey So please go and check out their channel as well guys and finally I'm going to put a link out in chat uh, for the mixologist group guys come and join us come and share your recipes come and ask dumb questions um, because there's nothing like a dumb question people are in this community are super happy to help out and um, you know it's, it's just a healthy community to be part of all right guys please remember to like and subscribe and uh, thank you so much for all the support cheers guys